Yeah, I want us to continue in uh, what we have begun. Uh, we are talking about maintaining the presence of God or the move of God. I want to read chapter 1 of Second Peter from verse, verse 4. Or we can begin from verse 3. I want to speak something about godliness. The Bible says, I'm reading first, second Peter chapter 1 verse 3. The Bible says, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertains unto life and godliness. I want you to mark that word. Godliness. All things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Verse 4 says, Whereby are given unto you exceeding great and precious promises, that by this you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence Add to your faith virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity, or love. And the Bible says, for if these things be in you, and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Nine says, but he that lacks these things is blind and cannot see afar off and has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. So, he says, we have been given all things that pertain to life and godliness. Everything that you need for life and godliness has been given to us, he says. All things that pertain to life and godliness, we have been given. And then he says, add to your faith. When you believed Jesus first, you received faith. Chapter 20 of Romans verse 3 says, Everyone of us was dealt a measure of faith. When you believed in Jesus, there's a faith that you're given. But then he says, add to that faith... I talks about I don't I want to speak I'm not speaking about all of these but I'm just specifically concentrating on godliness. But it says add to your faith excellence. Virtue simply means excellence. It means be excellent. Now that you have faith in everything you do, be excellent. Then number two he says add to your to, to excellence add knowledge. This word knowledge is a Greek word gnosis. He talks about the knowledge of this world. If you don't know English, learn English. If you want to survive, if I were in Ethiopia, I would be speaking this one. Or in Tanzania. You know, there they, English is a problem to them. And also this other side. And these people preach a lot. But English is a problem. So when the Bible says, add knowledge to your faith, in other words, learn something that can make you uh, profitable or successful in this world. There are things, there are skills if you learn, you'll be more productive in your faith. Hmm? And then he says, add to knowledge, he says, add temperance. Temperance is uh, self-control. Self-control. You, uh, you can get angry and before you do something, you catch yourself. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. You want to do something, but for a, maybe a good example is if you got so angry and you want to slap somebody. When I know I'm going to do that, I'm going to You catch yourself. Yeah. You, you catch yourself from doing it. Self-control. It's like, a, or you want to do something, you know, because of anger, something has pushed you, but then you, yeah. the, the, the Greek version of this word self-control is hold yourself from within. It's like, uh, you know, you, you, 
They're trying to do something, but then you, uh, you hold yourself, you, you restrain yourself from insight, from doing something wrong. And instead of doing and then repenting later, why did I do that? <laughs> Sometimes you want to speak something. People are talking. And then you also want to contribute. You are, you are tempted and you know it is wrong. Yesterday I was somewhere. And then I, I saw somebody just blowing things out of proportion. And he's a man of God. I just looked and I'm like, eh, let me just keep quiet. <laughs> you just watch. They are talking and <laughs> around four or five of them are talking. And you look and they're like, this is not right. You just walk away. You, otherwise, you can come in and also, hey, Nivo. So you, you, need to, you need to catch yourself from the inside and push yourself aside. And you say, no, 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 I'm not doing it. Self-control. Self-control is when you you stop yourself from doing what you know is wrong that you attempted to do. Self-control. This the Bible asks us to add all these to our faith. And then he says also patience. Patience is another thing. One thing that people lack is patience. And the Bible says faith works with two things, love and patience. Ya bank. Na unakuta ni ndefu. Ama line zingine tu. Hata kabla ujangia unaanza kush. Kutabika. <laughs> you look at the line you are like. Huh? Or you have to wait for something. And I'm surprised. You know when you go to hospital. The same when I went to hospital in Nairobi. The line was too long. You will sit and wait there. Lakini kuna line zingine ungoji unaruka. Sindia. Kuna zingine unaumwa tu. Hata kama ni kukaa for three, four hours uneza kaa pale. Kukuzo kuna pain lazima daktari ya kuone. Lakini kuna mali vizu kuingine. Patience. God expects us to be patient. When you are patient, you can't receive the promises of God unless you are patient. People who are not patient are tempted to do things that are not right. To, they look for shortcuts. I'm not, I'm not basing my talk on this. I'm just attaching. But all I'm trying to show you is that after you get born again, after you get faith, these virtues you need to add to your faith. You have to be an excellent person in everything that you do. Not a mediocre. You have to be, you have to know as much as possible in this world. You have to be you have to develop self-control. You have to you have to develop patience. This thing takes time. But what I want to talk about is godliness. And then it says to push patience, it says godliness. Another word for pay godliness is piety. Piety, what is piety? Is if if you you know there's some some activities that you need to add to yourself. That uh, I, I I want to use this one, but it's not a very good one. Uh, you know, when doing things religiously, when you when you talk about doing things religiously, you mean repeating something over and over, and this thing might not even help you. Religiously doing something, uh, when he says add to your faith godliness, he means. There are activities that you need to add to your faith. There are some things that you should be doing daily that makes your faith to work. Uh, First Timothy chapter 4 from verse 6. This is what he tells Timothy, this is Paul speaking to Timothy. He says, and if thou put, if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of the Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, where unto thou hast attained. 
but refuse profane and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. And then he says, For bodily exercise profits little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. He says, practice yourself unto godliness. It says, bodily exercise profits little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. In other words, exercise yourself in the spiritual things. That's what he means. He says, when you exercise yourself in the spiritual things, so what I'm saying is there are activities that or there are habits that you need to form after you came to faith. And this habit that you form is what also will cause, will sustain the move of God. We have already, we've already spoken about it. Like, for example, we talk about the word of God. Hearing the word of God will be something that you do every day and reading the word of God. Praying is something that you do every day. Hmm? Worshipping God like we are doing here. It should not just be like another thing that uh, we do religiously. When I talk about religious doing something, is you do something that does not benefit you. But godliness is activities that you do that profits you in all aspects of life. All aspects. Like, for example, reading the word of God has a lot of benefit to you. It opens your mind lots with enough, with enough knowledge. You know, if you choose to learn, if you want to learn, there's so much to learn. If you want to learn. So much. So much, there's so much to learn. The word of God has enough to teach you. So you have to give yourself to the word of God. Give yourself. It's like unaji. You know when you want to learn about something, you, you just say, I'm, for the next three years, for the next four years, I am fully committed to this and I'm going to study. That is how you need to give yourself. That is godliness. That is an activity you do. Like sitting and hearing the word of God to be taught is godliness. You, you, you choose, let me go. Praying daily. These activities that you do is what will make your faith more real. One of the things that people are taught after they get born again, they, are, they, they should be taught, is this aspect of godliness. This activity that you do daily, uh, you make it, uh, you make it your own uh, priority. These things I must do every, every day. As, that, that's what Paul is telling this guy. He's telling him, godliness is profitable unto all things. And then he's comparing that one to bodily exercise. When you do exercise, bodily exercise, the only benefit you get is your body becomes fit. Even if you, you're sick, sometimes it might not help you. If you're very sick, and you, do, do you even, are you able to, to do that exercise that you do? The only thing that the bodily exercise will help you is it will only help the body. But he says, godliness is profitable unto all things. Like number one, when you give yourself to godliness, and I'm going to give you all, the, the, the habits we've been talking about is what we're now talking about, godliness. If you're always hearing the word of God, everything about your life will improve. If you're in ministry, your ministry will improve. If you're in business, your business will improve. If you have marriage, your marriage will improve. If you have a relationship in a family, that, that aspect will improve. Everybody listen, the person listening to the word of God daily will always become unique even in the family. You can't compare that person to other people. Anything you touch progresses. Prayer helps everything. Prayer can cause you to get healed. When you pray, you get healed. Prayer can cause your future to come, uh, Selman says. Prayer prepares for you a future 
and then it causes you to land in. Hmm? Like the next four months, if you're praying for the next four months, you are making everything, you're speaking things that should happen into your life. And you should cancel what you don't want to see in the next four months. As you, you only speak what you want to see for the next four months. And you cut off whatever you don't want to see within the next four months. That is prayer. Whatever you don't want to see in your family, you can speak. Cut it off. Prayer. So it can help you in all aspects of life. Fasting is another thing. Fasting. Fasting can help you in so many things. Number one, fasting can tame your body. Appetite that you have. If you see some big ladies, they eat too much chips and too much cook. Very big. I, I think we don't have it in Marsabi. This is slim possible here. I want to have a little bit of water. I'm cool, son. But in Nairobi and in some cities, when you go, you see this heavy ladies and they are tired of their weight but they cannot stop eating I cannot stop <laughs> this thing is I think they are greedy although we don't want to use that term yeah we don't want to use that term we don't want to use that term we don't want to use that term and you are trying to. I had Bishop again the one day say, in this church, so many ladies are struggling with weight. It's the best way to go about it is to fast. And then one lady said, Najua, it's me hard. <laughs> it is hard to go without it. <laughs> the problem is the money that person has. You, you cannot. You want to control. That's why I was saying yesterday. Sometimes go without food. You will not die. Like this one day. Even if you are not fasting. Just drink water. A lot of water. Don't take breakfast. Don't take lunch. Don't like take supper. Then you can eat the following day. You will be very healthy. I am not Mackenzie. <laughs> Mackenzie says, fast until you see Jesus. <laughs> I'm not saying that. <laughs> what I'm saying is, some, just, just, sometimes just, just drink water. It's important. It's very healthy. So this is an activity that you need to add to your faith. I am fasting this week. Like once per week you must fast. Once. One day in a week. You say every Wednesday is the day I fast. I only take water. Don't go dry. If you ate food last night, kuna chafu kwa mwili yako. Lazima maji ifanye nini? Ishugulike. You you stay without it and you will be very healthy. You will be very healthy. And number 2 another advantage of faith uh, uh, fasting is you know when there's nothing in your stomach you will concentrate on God <laughs> when nothing is in your stomach you, you can think about God your, your concentration on God your attention on God will be a bit heavy you, it's, 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 you, you concentrate more on God when you're, the problem is every time you put something in your stomach you forget God that's the challenge. Every time food enters your stomach, you will never want to read Bible. You will never want to pray. You will never want, you will never want to wake up in the morning to pray. Because the body is stronger than the spirit. The spirit is weak. Really, you want to wake up and pray. But then the body simply say, ah, leo pana. <laughs> when you fast and pray, what happens is, your spirit controls your body and you will always do what is right. 
when you are eating too much, your body will control you and some of the things you need to do, you will not do. It becomes hard. It becomes hard. So this activity that you do every day, Pastor Lai was asked a question. He came to teach us and somebody asked him a question. He was asked, why are you this successful? He has never had scandals for the last 40 years. You can talk nothing about this man that is wrong. And he's the most respected pastor in, in Kenya. So one of us was asking him, why, how did you become this consistent? Your success throughout is just the same. Never compromised anywhere. No scandal for the last 40 years. You, you hear of so many other pastors, they have this, they have this happened, this happened. And he said, uh, he's been discipled a lot by, has been following my, Seruro, Modi Seruro. And then he says, there are things that we do habitually. And that thing we do, like for example, he's talking about reading the word of God. He says, for me, it has to become a habit. Studying. Prayer has to become a habit for me. Fasting has to become a habit for me. Giving is another habit for me. He says, these things I know if I continually practice without compromise, I, will, I have seen people who have gone before us and preached for, 70, for 40, 50, 60 years, like Billy Graham, and they contained themselves in doing these things every day of their life. And they ever rose to greatness through their life. You know Billy Graham the most powerful preacher he ever knew, whom he even said, this is my, uh, my role model, fell in sin. That day that man said, beginning today, I'm not going to look at anybody, but I am going to form my own standard so that I stay at the top in serving God. And one of the things that Billy Graham does every day, he reads at least five chapters of the Psalms, the book of Psalms daily, and he reads one chapter of Proverbs every day, all his life. Five chapters of the book of Psalms. In other words, he's reading the book of Psalms every month from the beginning to the end. And he's reading the book of Proverbs from chapter 1 to chapter 30 first every day every day of the month he reads a specific so meaning how many times does he read in a year and that has become his habit for more than for more than 30 40 years you read because there's too much wisdom in the book of proverbs that you find so he and then one thing that he says prayer when you look at his knees, you know that hooves? Billy Graham. It was just, it's too, if you look here, the guy says he prays like two, three hours every day. He says the only place, you know, we sing this song. Nime kukimbilia. If you say you need to stay at the place of prayer, you need to stay at the place of hearing the word of God daily, you need to stay at the place of uh, fasting. These things has to become a, a reality in you. You need also to, to read more books so that you improve this habit every day of your life. Now, the problem with many believers, as many as 99.9% .9 of believers around the world, in Kenya, Africa, and around the world, the first days you came to Jesus, you were very hot, hmm? very excited. You ran to the church. 
everything, you are number one. Then you begin cooling down. You know cooling down? You cool down little by little, little by little, little by little, and then you are no more. <laughs> no more in prayer. No more in reading the word of God. No more. Hmm? Then you sit and tell us, when I used to pray, those days when you used to fast, or some of us say, those days when we used to go to missions, you know, this is our experience. It was very good. What is happening right now? Men who have sustained the move of God all their life, they have made it priority to practice these practices that we are talking about. When he says, add godliness to your faith, that's what he means. Your prayer life has to be consistent. Every believer must at least pray one hour every day. That is uh, on the average, yeah? At least you need to be in the presence of God at least one hour every, every day. If you maintain that, everything about your life will speak differently if you compare it to people who don't go to, to, go to church every day. When he says, add to your faith, godliness, he means, exercise your spirit, your spirit being. We spoke yesterday. Do something that the spirit does. The spirit takes in the word of God. Like I said right now, you're eating. The spirit prays. Prayer is where you declare things. That prayer is not a place you come and beg God, please, I want this and that. No. Prayer is a place you come. You need to know that when you came to Jesus, all authority and power was given to you. So you have ability to make things work for you the way you want. So when you come, you declare. Hmm? Your life is a product of the words you've been speaking all through. And that's what you need to know. So, the reason as to why the move of God many at times dies down in a church is because some of these things that should be happening is not, it's not happening. When we are not praying every day, when you're not taking in the word of God every day, you have stopped the move of God. God finds expression when you hear his word to come into your life and your environment. God will find expression when you, when you pray. You know, every time you're praying, you are allowing him to come into your situation, into your land. Into, you, you are allowing him to come. Every time you are giving, you are causing him to come into your finances. Hmm? Anytime. And whatever the Bible says concerning giving will happen for you. Every time you are fasting, you have decided once per week I'm fasting. Like for us next week is the whole week fasting. Every last month of the week we fast least six days and you can try you only eat supper for six days will you die and you take water by the time you're hitting the next month you're very healthy <laughs> even bodily wise you're very healthy you fast you just take water the whole of that week take supper take water take supper the whole week. The following, the next three weeks, you can eat whatever you want. Even if you want to eat yourself into too much food. Then when you come the, third, the fourth week, we will begin fasting. So this practice, as he says, is profitable unto all things. Bodily exercise profits little, he says. But when you practice yourself in this God, in this in these things. So what I'm trying to say is this. I, I think if you are very careful to hear what I'm saying the whole of this week. Is. You need to practice yourself. You need to make some of this activity. A, a, a priority. Like worship that we did here. You know when. When, 
when Juma was leading this song hakuna hakuna wakulinganishwa na wewe Mungu mwenye nguvu you know for me i think i am i'm hearing it in, in a new fashion it's a song that you used to sing yeah <laughs> but you know when you know the uniqueness of god that how different god is there's a way it lands on you because it, there's, there's a revelation of god you find when you sing with a heart of worship not just because you know song there's something about god that is unique distinct Mungu mwenye nguvu hakuna wakulinganishwa na you this way how do you you know yesterday i was watching the the, the lecture of the president in south africa I don't know if you watched the man is spoken until the whole africa stood up <laughs> ruto did you listen to him yesterday the man is spoke things wow and you know every statement he makes people are shouting standing like ah and then somebody stood up to just uh, comment after he's made the statement the guy said where do i begin i don't even know what to say eh? I have never seen a president like this in Africa. In fact, he says now we don't president like this. A president who sees ahead. You no know, one thing about Ruto is the man is too courageous. He can say anything anywhere. And if he has nobody. He was just lecturing these superpowers who are always making these uh, you know Africans president when they hear the, this boss might be Biden or Putin when they call they, they come like they fear no kuna vile wanakuja kama wana wana expect and the man is saying how long one a guy from one nation gathering president from the whole africa 50 presidents sitting there like slaves this how long should this happen this is always spoke every statement he made throughout this man praised him. the whole room praised this guy this president says, wow, thank you, Kenya, for giving Africa this kind of president. Now, there's a way they praise this man. I am, I'm trying to look at uh, how we come before God. Hmm? How, how do we stand before him when you know that he's great, he's powerful, and he, all these things? Something else. There's a way, you know, the man felt like I am nothing, even standing here before you, guy. <laughs> you, this, you're so loaded with wisdom. When you worship God, there's a way you, there's a posture you, you, you have. The, the, there's a kind of uh, attitude you have when you honor God, when you worship God. So, like, like for us, it is routine to sing every time you come to church. But the question is, will, will you sing with understanding? Anybody who worships God in truth and in spirit will have open heaven over their lives all the days of their life. They will ever be victorious. Worshippers are never defeated. Never. And worship is not songs. But songs will help us to focus our mind on God and think. This is one of the ways of, of also, one of the things we talk about as godliness. Always. Sometimes we need just to go and read some part in the Bible that speaks about God. And just meditate on how great, how powerful, how mighty, how loving God is. And the best place to begin is chapter 38 of Job. Read chapter 38, 39, 40, and 41. God was asking Job some very serious questions. He was asking, when I created the mountain, where were you? <laughs> God was talking in those verses. I think, and then in verse 32, 42, Job says, before I heard you, but now I have seen you. <laughs> you know, after, after, after God spoke for those, in those, is it how many chapters? 38, 39, 40, 41, four chapters. After God spoke, and God spoke things that this man never heard. This guy said, you are just too big, too great, 
I have heard you before now. I have seen you. Now I worship you like I've never worshipped you before. Wow. God needs us to bring you to that point where every time your knowledge about God is improving. Every, you see, if truly you are serving God, you are inform, your knowledge must increase. You must be the most knowledgeable person in your environment. The Bible says in First Corinthians chapter number 2, around verse 13, 14, spiritual men cannot be judged. He says we cannot be judged. But we can judge everybody. We can simply look at everybody and we can judge. We have much understanding concerning everybody. But then he says, natural men cannot understand us. When you, the word of God fills you, you become, how do I put it, the most wise person in the environment, the most knowledgeable person in the environment. You, you are going to uh, demonstrate the character of God right here. And people will respect you because of who you are. Godliness. So when we continue in these practices, in fact, we, we bring you God on earth like never before. I think that is enough. I'm talking about godliness. Godliness. So this, this, this habit, this character, this aspect of coming to church every morning, this will happen until you die. Or until you find yourself in heaven. <laughs> Even when you go somewhere else, you need to look for ways. The aspect of reading the Bible daily, praying, fasting, giving. I, will, I will think I will finish with some few habits tomorrow. And then with next week, there's something I want to do. Yeah, let's have some 15 minutes to pray. Let's have some 15 minutes to pray.